The Michigan State spring game is less than two days old. You would think that that would be the most recent news, but more activity to report from uh, Spartan Camp. We got Ryan O'Blennis on the line from SB Nation's The Only Colors. Ryan, how's it going today? I'm good, Mark. There's always seemingly something to report on Michigan State Camp. <laughs> so I guess we'll get to it. A uh, couple uh, news and notes, first and foremost, from the transfer portal. Yeah, so uh, linebacker Ben Van Sumeren, uh, you know, he entered the portal in March, but Mel Tucker and the staff kind of allowed him to stay on with the team. He practiced throughout spring. He participated in the spring game. Um, news broke Monday that he is, has withdrawn his name from the portal. So, you know, he'll be staying on Michigan State's roster for the 2022 season. You know, he, he looked fairly sharp in the spring game, and, you know, he'll provide good depth and rotation. Uh, you know, be a rotational player there for uh, the linebacking group. And also running back Donovan Eaglin, he entered the transfer portal on Monday. Uh, you know, there's a deep, deep group of running backs at Michigan State right now. Um, there's a lot of bodies. So, you know, I understand his decision to do that. There are a lot of guys probably ahead of him in the depth chart in the pecking order. Then you also have Jarek Broussard, the Colorado transfer, who's coming in in the summer and is, is also going to be expected to get, you know, he, you know, either start or get significant playing time. So Eaglin has three years of eligibility and I'll look to, to use it at another school. Ryan O'Blen is here from the only colors to break down Michigan state football. Uh, the Spartans hit the field for a spring practice scrimmage slash game, whatever you want to call it with a number of drills, seven on seven, 11 on 11 in Spartan Stadium on Saturday with a crowd of about, uh, I don't know, 25, 30,000. I don't know what the number was. I saw quite a bit of it. But um, before we hit uh, what we saw on Saturday, uh, cornerback Eddie Pleasant out of uh, Tampa, Florida, has called Michigan State uh, his destination. Yeah, so he, uh, you know, he's a three-star prospect, but is a kid who the staff seems to be uh, really high on. You know, he's got a a good offers list and you know I, I don't believe he was at the spring game on Saturday Michigan State did have about 40 prospects of, you know several four stars and five stars but Pleasant actually visited the week before and I you know I think he let Michigan State was able to lock him in during that visit and that weekend and uh, he's now the sixth member currently committed to the 2023 class it's already off to a strong start all right now let's get to the um festivities on Saturday since you led us down the path at running back to a certain extent with uh, Jarek Roussard coming in in the summer Jalen Berger already on campus I've listed six running backs here who could possibly get into the fray of course led by Jordan Simmons and Elijah Collins but uh, do you think anything was determined at this spring yeah, you know, it was hard to tell. I would say that, um, you know, when Michigan State went into the drills where they had their first team defense or his first team offense, Jalen Berger was the first running back out there for the, for that. So, you know, maybe that means that currently he's in the lead, but, you know, you can't really take too much away from the spring game that was essentially an open practice. Either way, I do expect Berger to be in the mix come fall to either start or, you know, be in the rotation. Uh, running back coach Ephraim Reed said that, you know, he's expecting to play two or three running backs per game come the fall. So, you know, guys like Berger and Broussard will probably be in there. And then, as you mentioned, you got uh, Jordan Simmons coming back. You have Elijah Collins coming back. Those two have played a lot of snaps. You know, they have experience. They'll be able to mix in there. You also have Errol Joyner, um, you know, who transferred in from Auburn last year and uh, was kind of more of like your uh, pass protecting back. He can catch it out of the backfield. Um you know, they can move him around the field a little bit. He'll probably be in the mix, too. And then Davion Prim, the redshirt freshman, is a guy who uh, has been standing out for MSU at, throughout the spring. The coaching staff, you know, has, has been impressed with what he's done. And if he keeps that up in the fall, you know, he'll, he'll find a role, too. Mel Tucker called, uh, you know, said there's a player alert for, for Prim. You know, so that means watch out for him. Nothing, you know, nothing set in stone with that running back rotation. A lot's going to change between now and in fall camp and the first game of the year, but, you know, certainly there are a lot of different guys there who can end up carrying the ball. Looking around the big 10, I got to think that uh, the conference ranks extremely high in regards to 
percentage of starting quarterbacks coming back, especially the contenders all seem to be set, including at Michigan State with Peyton Thorne. But there is a battle for the backup job. Uh, Noah Kim seems to possibly have the inside track. Yeah, I think if you watch the game, you could kind of see that Kim definitely seemed to have, you know, a better understanding of the offense than the two younger guys behind him, Hank Fay, uh, who's a redshirt freshman, and Caton Hauser, who's a true freshman early enrollee. You know, Kim had some pretty nice throws. Again, it, it's hard to really glean anything out of the spring game. Um, you know, I don't think anything's set in stone, and certainly Mel Tucker said that the backup quarterback battle is going to go into camp. You know, he didn't want to to name one right now. He was asked about it after the spring game. Um, and he was asked about it before the spring game and basically thinks, uh, you know, that that'll go into, go into camp. So, you know, again, a lot of things can change from, from uh, now until then. But I think that, you know, to me, from my eyes, it looked like Kim should be the number two quarterback right now. Um, I think that he probably is going to end up being Thorne's immediate backup, but we'll see how it plays out. Ryan O'Blend is on the line with us, talking about Michigan State football, coming off, of course, 11-2 and in a Peach Bowl victory over Pitt, top 10 ranking in the country. And uh, you can catch Ryan and the rest of the crew there at uh, the only colors on SB Nation. With these two transfers coming in, and we've talked about it uh, throughout the offseason uh, to the linebacking core, uh, that seems to have been confirmed as a extremely strong position uh, based on what I heard during the uh, spring uh, game on Saturday. Yeah, it went from, uh, you know, a position group last year that was kind of an unknown to one of the deepest positions on the team now um, because, you know, not only is Michigan State returning Cal Halliday, who had, you know, his breakout season last year as a redshirt freshman, um, and, you know, Quavaris Crouch, he, he's been out this spring, but, you know, he started for the majority of last year too, uh, and he'll be back. But then you add in the two transfers, you know, Jacoby Winman from UNLV and Aaron Brule from Mississippi State. Um, and they, and in the spring game, you saw those two not only lining up at linebacker, but also getting some reps. Um, you know, it's kind of like a stand-up pass rusher. Uh, and I think that, you know, you're going to be able to use those two guys in unique ways like that and get some, some pressure on the quarterback. I think I saw a stat recently that uh, Brule led – the SEC and total pressures over the past, you know, out of all the linebackers in the past 10 years or something like that, he was number one on the list. So he's definitely, you know, somebody who can, if they choose to have him as a stand up edge rusher or blitz him, can get to the quarterback or he can, you know, play more of a traditional linebacker role. And then, you know, we talked about Van Sumeren. He'll be back too as a rotational guy who will probably be in the mix. Um, you know, and sim similar to uh, Van Sumeren, my no eight. No way, Ote. He also entered the portal earlier this year and then returned back to Michigan State. So he's another guy who, you know, he's young and he's going to develop. And I'm sure that, you know, he's going to work his way onto the field in some capacity too. And then in addition to all those guys who are already at the linebacker spot, you have Darius Snow who came down from, you know, playing his nickel or safety position. And now they're using him as a linebacker or, um, you know, in the spring game, you saw him play both the linebacker spot, mostly like Will, um, you know, the weak side linebacker, but also still playing some nickel, lining up out wide. So you might see Michigan State run some more three linebacker sets this year, um, especially when they want to get snow on the field in that capacity, maybe against teams that uh, might be passing it more because snow, you know, he'll be able to cover from that linebacker spot or the nickel spot or wherever he's, he's playing at. So, yeah, there are a lot of different guys there, and it's going to be interesting to see you know, how Michigan State rotates them if Michigan State chooses to play primarily the 4 5 if they choose to, you know, get three linebackers on the field more often. So that's definitely something to watch. After what we saw in 21, one of the uh, positions of need and one of the positions that had to be garnering a lot of attention on the Big Ten Network and in the stadium would be cornerback, I would think. Uh, Peyton Thorne had a lot of good things to say about Amir's speed in regards to not just what happened on Saturday, but throughout uh, the entire spring practice. Uh, your thoughts about who might be emerging at cornerback? Yeah, um, you know, speed, I think, was impressive on, on Saturday and a lot of questions in the post game regarded about him. And, you know, not only was Thorne complimenting him, but so was Jaden Reed, you know, just 
because, you know, he's long and he's physical and they think that he's going to be, you know, really uh, an upgrade there at that position. And you saw Chester Kimbrough, who played a lot of outside cornerback for MSU last year, um, you know, and had his ups and downs. He, he seemed to be playing a lot of nickel nickelback in the spring game, and that might be kind of a, you know, a more natural position. He looked kind of better uh, tackling and making more plays there. Ronald Williams did not participate in the spring game, and he, you know, he's probably somebody that you can still expect to start as the other outside cornerback, probably opposite of uh, Amir Speed. But, you know, there, there were other guys that were in the mix, too, that you saw getting a lot of playing times. A guy like Justin White was getting a lot of reps, who, you know, is a name that people might not know about, but, you know, he got some playing time last year, and he could be in for a more increased role this year. Um, you know, Marquis Lowry is another guy who who ended up getting, you know, getting some good good amount of snaps last year. Charles Brantley uh, was a freshman last year. He got hurt, and he was wearing, like, a red no-contact jersey through the spring game, so he was kind of a limited participant in that point. But, you know, he showed a lot of promise last year, and once he's healthy, you know, he's definitely going to be in the mix there too. Um, you know, you had a couple of early enrollee guys out there, uh, like Caleb Coley, who – he looked like he was playing with some sort of cast on his wrist. Um, so, but you know, he, he's a guy who I know the staff was really high on as a freshman and, you know, he might not get a ton of playing time this year, but could, you know, be an eventual, eventual starter for MSU down the road. So there's a lot of different names there. A lot of guys who could be in the mix, but I think those are the main guys you're looking at there. Ryan, in addition to everything that we just hit on, and not just based on what we saw on Saturday, but everything you've collected throughout the spring. Is there anything we've missed? Anything else that needs to be talked about, whether it's a unit, whether it's a particular player, or just maybe an emphasis or priority in camp, according to Mel Tucker? Yeah, um, you know, I think that we're going to see a lot of uh, maybe more production from the tight end position this year with Malik Carr maybe stepping up. You got uh, Daniel Barker transferring from Illinois in the summer. He's not there yet. Jack Nickel is a, a early enrollee freshman who's, uh, you know, really known for his blocking. He also made a nice catch uh, during the spring game. So he's a guy who could be in the mix. And Tyler Hunt, um, I believe he was limited in the spring game too with an injury or maybe didn't uh, participate. I can't quite remember, but he is another veteran who's coming back who's going to be, you know, pretty big for that tight end room. So I'm kind of excited to see how that room progresses and what they're able to, uh, to bring to the field there. Ryan O'Blen is the only color is Michigan state football. It's a long time to August. So, uh, get prepped for a summer camp, fall camp, and, uh, certainly check out the work there on SB nation. Ryan, we appreciate you stopping by. Absolutely. Always a pleasure.